it's high time the unsung sheroes get their day in the sun. Our guest is here to share why a particular USO volunteer should be honored on this National Vietnam War Veterans Day. Let's welcome Tara McClary Reeves, author and daughter of a decorated Vietnam veteran, Cleve McClary. It's great to have you with us. Layla, it is an honor to be with you. Thanks for having me. So, so you, your father, let, yes. let's start with him, sure. shall we? So sure. tell us more about your dad. Well, my dad is truly not only an American hero in my eyes, but he is also definitely a South Carolina hero. Yeah. Daddy is a native South Carolinian, born and raised in Georgetown, now living on Pauley's Island. And he was 26 years old when he was coaching at the University of South Carolina and saw somebody burn the American flag. Yeah. And Layla, it outraged him. Wow. Three days later, he went into the head coach's office and said, I am volunteering for Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And he did. He That's went incredible. over and served. He was a recon Marine. They fought behind enemy lines. Uh, he led 19 patrols and it was on his last patrol that they were hit. And dad took 13 men. He wanted to bring 13 back. Um, Tom Jennings and Ralph H. Johnson gave their all that night, as many of our viewers actually realize. Yes. Uh, Ralph was the young Marine that jumped on the grenade to save my life and the rest of the Marines that were on that hill with them. That's incredible. And of course, and the Ralph H. Johnson VA Center is named after yes, him. Yes, Daddy, Daddy and Governor Jim Edwards actually yes. were very influential in having that done in the early 90s. So. But your father didn't come away completely unscathed. No, my dad, um, I, I once said my dad gave, uh, lost his left arm and left eye in Vietnam and my mother, my Shiro, reminded me, she said, no, my dear, he did not lose his left arm and eye, he gave them in service to our country yes. and I'm grateful for that. That's a beautiful Holiness. distinction. It That's is. a beautiful distinction. It is. But while he was in bed recuperating, there was an angel who, who, who heard about what was happening in Vietnam left her home in New Jersey to travel on a one-way ticket to Saigon. So tell us more about this that. This story is truly made for a movie. Uh, Lucy Caldwell was the widow of Coach Charlie Caldwell. He is in the Hall of Fame, and he was a head football coach in Princeton, at Princeton University. And they were living there on College Street. And after he had died, Lucy was 56 years old, and she would turn on the news at night, and she would see the anger Mm -hmm. that was lashed against these men that were fighting over in Vietnam and it outraged her so much, Layla. She bought a one-way ticket to Saigon, not knowing a soul over there. I'm a firm believer in God's sovereignty and she providentially was directed to the USO. She arrived on their doorstep literally and said, I am here to serve. Mm -hmm. And for 30 months, this 56 year old widow, that's actually 30 months. That's actually longer than most of the tours of duty for those wow. that were actually assigned in Vietnam. She volunteered her service. She made dinners. Uh, she hosted Christmas parties. She wrote letters. She solicited countless care packages. I have found in my research of her hundreds if not thousands of letters that she would pen to the tiniest little towns across our country yeah. saying, these men need encouragement. Can you please send a care package yeah. over here? And, and part of her legacy is in your hands well, right now. And let me tell you about that. That's so interesting. Yeah. She was sitting at dinner one night and General Walt, who was truly a Marine's Marine, he was the general over there. He had served in previous wars and beloved by his men and he loved his men. Well, he's sitting at the table and he sees Lucy Caldwell badge. Well, back then, if you were married, you had your husband's name and it said Mrs. Charles Caldwell. Mm -hmm. And General Walt looked at her and said, huh, I tell you what, the greatest football coach I've ever known was by that name. And he said, you probably wouldn't have known of Charles Caldwell. And Not only did she know Let him. me tell you what her response was. It was beautiful. She had a very quick wit and she said, well, I only know that he liked three lumps of sugar in his coffee in the morning. That's and great. General Walt, Walt realized that this woman that was of means and very accomplished socially sure. had deserted all of those bridge games, all of those social parties, yeah. had stripped herself of those things and her identity became in service. And so he wanted her because her heart was so sincere. He put her 
in the mass units. So when men like my father uh, would come from the jungle yes. and they were wounded, the field hospital where Lucy was, was the first stop for them before they were transported to Bethesda Naval mm -hmm. Hospital or Marble Mountain, Japan. And it was there, Daddy never saw Lucy because uh, Daddy had suffered such traumatic brain injury mm. and his left arm had been amputated, his left eye had been completely blown out. And so what happened, his head was bandaged, but he heard the sweet voice sitting next to him. Oh and Lucy was so concerned about Daddy's wife of, they had just been married less than a year. Mm -hmm. They were getting ready yes. two weeks later to celebrate their one year wedding anniversary. Wow. Lucy coaxed Daddy to write a letter of encouragement back to his wife. And one of those letters yes. is in your hands. Can you read us it just is. a short excerpt? Now this is actually, my dad dictated this to Lucy. Yes. So it would be like me sitting here and you had a pen and paper writing down what I wanted you to say. And so it, daddy's words were, my dearest Deanna, darling, I'm sorry I'm not being able to write this myself. I just got hit. Don't worry about me. They're taking fine care of me and I'm in fine hands. We were on our 19th patrol and on Hill 146 about 1.30 in the morning when we started getting hit by mortars and incoming grenades. They were all over us. And then I'll go to the end. Sorry this had to happen before our R&R and &R in our first anniversary. There's a good chance I'll be home for the anniversary. I love you, Cleve. And then the last note, says this, and this is all in Lucy's handwriting. I've written this letter exactly as your husband has asked me to. It is an honor and an inspiration to help a man who has done so much for us all. That's Lucy so Caldwell. That is US. so beautiful. And you're keeping Lucy's memory alive. You're going to be at Patriots Point for the Vietnam War Veterans yes. uh, Memorial. And so we're going to put all that information up on our screen. I want to thank you so much, Tara, oh, for joining you. us. Thank you for recognizing, especially Absolutely. this is Women's History Month, and too, Women's History Month, and so. National Vietnam War Veterans Day. So and thank you. All veterans come out Absolutely. for this event. And our so. hats off to Lucy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. We're back after this.